Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Um, it is morning. It's actually middle of the night here, but I woke up, so it's my morning. And um, I am into. Let I. I am going a little further with my quilting project, and so I want to show you where I'm at here. <clears throat> I have taken four squares, and I've put them together. I've got four squares put together. This is the back. See? Now, the back of this whole quilt is going to look like this. Well, different patterns, but this is flannel. These pieces are flannel. 10 by 10 inch. Actually, it's 9.5 by 9.5 inch. And so, and then I sew them to the back of each square. And then, so this is the top of the quilt is going to look all mismatched like this. And if you see here on the, the seams, the seams are raw that are holding the pieces, the squares together. They're all raw. Okay, so I'm going to show you now real quick, like, I won't keep you long, don't worry. Um, I'm probably lying, but hey. So what I have done is I have cut pieces of flannel in, into approximately a 10 by 10 inch square. And so, I'm going to put you down here on this here thing, right here. Let me see, right here. Okay, hopefully you can see, okay, my new camera angle might not be the best in the West, but it's, it's well, I'm going to put it right here because I get to trim the thing. Okay, so, I have got, this is a nine inch, nine and a half by nine and a half inch ruler. So, it's nine and a half by nine and a half around. And... So, and but my squares, I started them at 10 by 10s, and that's what they were going to stay by. But what I realized after I, um, after I put a few together, that they didn't all, some of them, the fabric was a little stretchy, since I use all different kind of fabrics, they didn't all fit exactly, exactly the same. So what I figured I'm going to do is, they're all going to be nine and a half by nine and a half. So I have, there's the square, that's the square here, and that's the flannel on the back. So I've got wrong sides together here. This button on here gives me a little bit of a lump I got to work over, but not so bad. Then I lay that 10 by 9.5 by 9.5 inch square ruler on top. Now, move my mouse pad over and turn my, well, well, bozo brain. Jeez. Okay. Well, I don't need my mouse up there right now. Anyway, so let me just move it right there. Okay. So now what I'm going to do, I got my nine and a half by nine and a half inch ruler and I got my rotary cutter and what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut both pieces at the same time. I'm not throwing these strips away because I'm saving them all up because one day I'll show you how I make a dog bed. This this will stuff my doggy bed using a sweatshirt. All right, sweatshirt doggy bed, and um, and if any of you haven't seen this type, what is this? Caliber art is what this um, this cutting mat is. But do you see it turn? It's got. Do you see the white part on the back here? The white here white here yeah there it is okay then see I can turn the whole thing it's like a, on a turntable almost so then my I don't have to move the, the quilt block and then here we'll go ahead and do this edge save that piece and then I'm going to do this edge and this um you can buy square rulers in in so many different sizes and this one just happens to be nine and a half by nine and a half, so that is what I'm using. And so there. Now I have cut that whole thing. It, the backing and the, the top is nine and a half by nine and a half. 
And so that only is really cutting only a quarter of an inch off all the way around. So what I'm going to do now is I'll bring it up. I, you know, maybe I will go ahead and pin it just a little bit here. Where to pin? Oh, there it is. Maybe I'll just do a couple of pins. I'm going to clean off that pin cushion. I've got so many on there. It doesn't need to be there. Okay, so I'm going to just put one sort of at each corner, but not in the way of where I have to move it while I'm sewing. But see, they're right together now, the front and the back. So this is going to be just perfect. Okay. This was one of my slashing ones. This is this. Ooh, that's too close. Um, this is one of the, the squares that I did the slashing on. I love the slashing. One day I might do a whole slashing one all on its own. Okay, so now I'm going to go, and I'm using my presser foot as a guide here. And because, well, my needle's got one, two, three, it can be, so I got it right in the center, using the presser foot as guide. And I'm going to, now my thread come out of the needle. That's okay, though. No big hairy deal. And so I'm going to um, put it back in the needle. That's what you do when your thread comes out of the needle. You just stick it back in the needle. Boy, I'm telling you, it's hot. I am. I was sitting in here in my flannel knot down for a while. I said, that's too hot. i got to put some clothes on. And so um, I know we here in Florida, you just never know if it's going to be hot or cold. Okay, so I'm going to... Come on. Okay. Now I'm using that presser foot as a guide. I'm watching the edge of it, and I'm keeping that the edge of it right there at the edge of the fabric so that I know my seam is going to be right in the same place all the way along, making kind of a straight. I just really do love this, um, the, um, what do I call that? Slashing. It's so pretty. It's just, I think it's just beautiful. Maybe I'll do a whole quilt of just slashing one day. Because right now I feel like, oh, wait a minute here. Let's turn this up here a little bit. Um, and so I'm just going to go all the way around that square and I'm going to do four squares. have that one the back is sewn to the front so <coughs> we're going to we're going to go ahead and we're going to do another so let's see I put teddy bears on that one let's see I think I'll put this one I got a bit of flannel I hope I'm gonna have enough to do the whole the whole quilt. If not, I'll have to use something different. But so here I've got lay that the front side, the good side down, and then I'm going to pick up another square. And this one is just raggedy jaggedy. Let's see, this one's been washed, so I've got some threads there, and I'll lay that on top of there, and just lay that right on top of there. And then I'll get my square. 
my square ruler. Keep turning my thing here. And then I will use my rotary cutter. You know, I have a rotary cutter that's um, a pinker. That might look cool, too. I might do that later. But I love this here cutting mat that I can just turn the whole mat. I need to really reorganize this table because I got some stuff on the back of the table there that really does not need to be there. I need to move some of that out of the way so that I have more room. There you go. And now I've got that perfect nine and a half by nine and a half inch square. And so now I'm going to I'm going to stitch that on. Come on, sewing machine. Some of, sometimes my sewing machine doesn't want to wake up in the morning. It wants to just sleep. And um, I feel your pain, sewing machine. Boy, all of my little squares are so different. They're just all so different, which I think is going to make such an interesting finish. I didn't pin this, and I can see I should have because it kind of jabberwockied off the edge right there. That's okay, though. It's going to be fine. And I'll remember to pin the next one. fourth edge. Now see, I have this one, it's jiggling up. It's like um, gathering itself up. Well, I, you know, because some of the fabrics do that, because I've got so many different fabrics, you know. So I'm just letting it go ahead and do that. And um, then I'll just kind of gather it up in there as I stitch, and it's fine. See, it gathered up like a little bit right there on that little piece, but I just let it gather. It's fine. It's I let it rule the roost. Okay, and then what do I have here? Is that all? Oh, and then I have, oh, then I have these trains. Let me see. Let me see. My thumbs don't work in the morning. Oh, okay. There we go. And it's got some trains on it. See how that light just glares down there. Okay, so I'll put that good side down and get me another piece here. And let's get this one. I guess it doesn't matter which one I get, really. But I think I'm going to, as I put them together, I'm going to kind of... Some of them are dark and some of them are light. This one's more of a light pastel-y colors. And um, I, I might be sure to um, have those kind of evenly distributed so that it's not going to be all dark over here and all light over here. So I might do that and see how that works. It's a good plan. I don't know if they'll actually do it or not. There I have my 9.5 by 9.5 inch ruler. And I'm going to... I'm going to cut that. And then turn my turn my board. This here company that I bought this from, and there might be other companies that do the same thing, but this one's from Caliber Art, and um, it's like a family-run business. It's not big corporation that that come up with these. 
And I'm sure others now have come up with the same thing. You know that. It's like, uh, it's like, I don't know. It's Well, it's 13 inches by 13 inches is the size of it. And, but see, when you can turn it like this, you're not, your, your patch, I mean, for quilting, it is just perfect because you're not, your, your patch is staying where you want it to be. Not pretty, that one's so pretty too. I think they're all pretty. Okay, now, so now I'll give this one a stitch. Give this one a bit of a stitch. Staying right close to the edge there. So I've only got, it's about a, maybe a quarter of an inch. I'm not sure exactly. I think it's a quarter of an inch. I guess if I read right there on the, on the plate, it would say. a better better outcome if you pin it together is that one that I didn't pin it kind of jiggled it kind of jiggled like jello jiggled like jello not finished making squares. I'm still going to be making squares, but I just haven't, you know, I just have to change. I have to change modes just a little bit. And so, see there, now that one's got the backing on it. And now I need to do one more. I'll do this one here. This was flannel that I had bought and I made my granddaughter some years ago, um, flannel nightgowns. And it says all over it, I love grandma. Perfect, right? Yep, perfect. Okay, so now I'm going to take this one and am I going to want to get a darker one? Yeah, let's get a dark one. Let's get a dark one here. This one's darker. Okay. Now, see, like I put a, a little bit of a doily and a button on this one already. Um, I can still add more to it. If I want to add something to it, even with the backing on it, that'll be fine. I can do that even if there's stitching that shows on the back. It just does not matter to me. To me, I'm not particular. So, let's see here. Some of these are, like this one here, it is only nine and a half already as wide so it's good that I'm cutting them all to nine and a half by nine and a half because putting the squares together I was saying ten by ten but it's actually it's going to depend on your fabric because some of the fabric might stretch a little bit and um, and, and sometimes my measuring just isn't right and so by cutting them down to the nine and a half by nine and a half, then I know all of my my all of my squares are going to be exactly the same. And for those of you who haven't watched, I've got quite a few videos, I think thirteen of them, that um, 
that show some of the squares that I've made already. Like here, this is like a satin fabric. It's like a wrinkled satin. I think it's so pretty. And then this color, this one little piece right here is almost like an upholstery. The others, I think, are all cotton. This one here is batik. And this, this, you know, a quilt like this is a work of art. It really is. It's definitely an art project. And I told this yesterday, too, on a video, or the day before, about looking up on video. Uh, look up the videos of the, um, uh, what do you call them, the G's Bend, Alabama, ladies and look at some of their quilts and if you like rag quilts if you like this and and see some people call these crumb quilting rag quilting crazy quilting um you can make up your known i'll just call it unicorn quilting what the heck and um but so many people have different names that they call them but they're all kind of the same thing they're all fun so, where's my gas pedal? Oh, there it is. Oops. My little piece didn't. Supposed to be. Oh, I got a thread hung around the old presser foot there. Thread hung around the presser foot. There we go. I'm not a seamstress, you guys. I barely know how to turn the sew machine on. So, um, you don't have to be a seamstress. You don't have to be anything fancy. In fact, I got to make some Barbie doll dresses. I was, um, I had my granddaughter Aria over yesterday, and she was playing. I've got a Barbie and a Ken that Papa bought for me. Last Christmas, he bought me a Barbie in a can because I was whining that I've never had a Barbie doll and I wanted a Barbie doll all my whole life. And um, and and I didn't have one. And so last Christmas, Papa got me a Barbie in a can. Well, yesterday, Aria, um, we was having our Friday night bonfire night, but she was in here and she put Barbie's clothes on Ken and Ken's clothes on Barbie. <laughs> so cute. I said, I got to make us some clothes. Well, as it turns out, my friend Lori Lala Gamma, Lori Way, she gave me a bunch of patterns for Barbie doll clothes. And so, and I have not used them yet. She gave them to me about a year ago. Well, it's not been quite a year. But, so I got them out. Me and, me and um, Aria were looking at them. Aria and I were looking at them, however you say it. And um, we picked out some dresses that we want for Barbies. And then she's going to come over and we're going to play Barbie together with when I get these dresses made up. But there's some beautiful ball gowns. There's even a bride, a bride dress on one of the patterns. So hats, they have patterns for hats. So we're going to be making some Barbie doll clothes too. And so, and since I have so many little, little scraps like this, you know, there, is that four? Yeah, I got four now. Okay, got four. Now, now what I'm going to do is, let's see, we're going to want to have these four, and, and then I'm going to see one, two, three, four, like this, one, two, three, four. Okay, so what I'm going to do now, now I'm going to put right sides together with the quilting with the um, flannels. So we only see the flannel and we're going to get them lined up nicely. Line them up, put them together so they're lined up nice and close. And um, then we're going to go back here again with, with that same size. This is the one that moved a little because I didn't pin it. So I see a little jaggedy edge there, but it it's going to be okay. It's going to be just fine and dandy. You know what? 
I just did this wrong. Why didn't y'all tell me I was doing it wrong? I don't want to do it that way. No. Okay. So this is where we now. I was just doing that wrong. Hang on. I got to get my seam ripper. I think it's in this here cigar box. I was doing that wrong, y'all. Okay. So now. I'm going to teach you that. The world is not a perfect place, especially here at Springtime Street. Okay, now, so I'm going to pull that stitching back out of there with my seam ripper. I'm going to just pull that out of there. Now, see, this is where a professional would, um, would um, edit, and the professional would um, not show this part. But um, since I'm only a semi-professional... I'm semi-professional because I got a, I turned professional after I got a, um, a tripod. That really made me feel professional. So anyway, so I'm just getting that seam out that I put there because I don't want the right sides together. I want the wrong sides together, which is the back sides, front sides and back sides. I shouldn't say wrong because there's nothing wrong here. So I'm just going to say front side and back side. Ain't nothing wrong with back sides. Okay, now, so now let's go over again with that. I'm going to put the flannel sides, the back sides together. Now, that's the way I want to sew that. Good thing I didn't go too far before I had to fix that. Okay, so now, now, hopefully you can see what I'm doing. I'm not, I'm not... You know, well, I've confessed before I could never get a job as a light bulb. I'm not bright enough. Okay, now. So we're going to get that, and I'm sewing that with about a quarter of an inch. It might be about a three-eighths of an inch. Okay, so that's the way I wanted it. Okay, now see... So I got those two stitched together, and the, and the seam is on the top side, on the front side of the quilt. Okay, and now I'm going to stitch these two together the same way. So it's going to be back sides together. <laughs> back sides together. That reminded, you know, just words can remind me of stuff way back in the day. My sister and I, we shared a bed. We were little. And m mother would send us to bed, and then we would giggle and giggle and giggle. And, and you know, and she would, and um, she would just get to the bottom of the stairway, and she'd yell up the, butt, up the stairway at us. She goes, you girls, butt to butt, she said. That means we were supposed to go butt to butt so that we would quit giggling and so we went butt to butt one time and she butted me right out of the bed she butted she butt me so hard she butt me right out of the bed we was only like little like five and six you know we was little <laughs> butt to butt she'd say and she'd say that to us all the time butt to butt because we giggle you're supposed to giggle, you know, when you're trying to go to sleep. But anyhow, I don't know what we were giggling about. Okay, now we're going to go, again, we're going to put the front sides together to, so that quilt tops are together. No, 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 no. Quilt backs together. So we're going to go like this. But now what you want to do, because I'm putting two with two, I'm putting two with two. I want to make sure that these seams in the middle, that seam in the middle, make sure that meets. Okay? So, because if you start equally at the top corner up here, you might not have it equal in the middle here. And so, we want to try to get that equal. If it doesn't get, like, real equal, it's no big hairy deal. It's just a blanket keep you warm. It'll keep you warm no matter what. Okay, I'm going to put a little pin. I'm going to put a pin 
right here at my seams to kind of hold, make sure that they stay put. You all stay put now, you hear? You hear me? Okay, now. Get me a little magnet right there on the corner. One of them magnetic pin things. Seems like I had one at one time, but I haven't seen it in years, so probably piled in Mount Scratmore somewhere. And here we go. And this is how I'm going to finish off this quilt. And so then I will need not to do, now see, there I've got, those are the bags. So this quilt is going to look pretty on the bed, whether it's on frontwards or backwards. Either way, I love this raggedy size. Okay, the side. Now I have the one piece over here that I had already did and got for four pieces together and so now I'm going to take those four pieces and what the heck I'm not going to worry about if it's um I'm not going to give it too much thought about the darks and the lights whatever it's going to just be a surprise it's going to be a surprise however it turns out and so so we're going to see how this is this is going to be eight pieces together right here eight squares. I wanted to get some squares together, you know, even before, because I was itching. I was itching to start getting it together. And so in this kind of a quilt here, this kind of a quilt, you don't have to get the whole top finished before you start. You know, some people, some kind of quilt, you got to get the whole top all pieced together and then start putting the batting and putting the backing and everything on and but not this kind not this kind right here this kind you can be putting it together and um once you get the whole shoot match done then then um it's done then it's done i mean when you get all the pieces together then you may want to put an edge on it and it isn't even necessary that you put an edge a, a binding on it that isn't even necessary but i'm going to put a binding on here but it's not going to be anything fancy what i think it's going to be right now may change i might change my mind but it's not going to be a regular blanket binding it's going to be something else. I don't know what else. You could even put a ruffly lace all the way around it. Make it lacy. Make it fit for a queen. Okay, now I have got eight of my squares. Oopsie, I got them two squares together that match the same. And I was planning not to do that, but it is it. So that's the way it's going to be. But see, that's going to be fine like that. So that's the back of the quilt. That's how the back of the quilt is going to be. Squares like this. And then here, look at that. Can you see that? I think this is beautiful. I think this is beautiful. And what I think I'm, what I'm going to do, once I get this big enough for the whole bed and it'll cover the whole bed then I'm going to make a strip and it's probably going to be three squares wide and as wide as and and then as long three squares one way and then the other way as wide as the bed and then so I'll lay the 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 quilt flat over the bed then set the pillows where they belong, and then the piece that is only three squares wide and as wide as the bed will just go over the pillows. 
and I th and then with the binding around it and stuff, I think that will be pretty. But what do you all think of this? I love it. I love this. I love this. I love this. I, and it's just because, I don't know, I love anything that is just colorful. It's remarkable. It's it's so pretty. So pretty. There's a button there and a button there and a button there. This one's got a button here and a doily here and a crocheted flower here. There's another button there. It says inspire here. Here's another crocheted flower. And so once this is on the bed and you're looking at it, there's going to be so much to see. So much beauty in this thing. Look at this. See, and there's a ribbon, rickrack. That's the jeans pocket right there. You can put some notes in there. Yeah, or you know you can what you can do you can put in your your crackers in there so if you wake up in the night and you got um you got the munchies you want something you just find a pocket and see if there's a candy bar in there or something I love it I love 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 this and now I'm gonna, I don't know what I'll do today if I'll if I'll continue to um how long have I in, I've only been on here 36 minutes but maybe I'll just work on on my um, sewing the pieces together today a little bit. I'm not sure. I'm, not, I'm never sure of what I'm going to do. See, that one's got one button. But for those of you who do have scrap material, and you can do this with, you know, your old T-shirts, your old shirts, your old blue jeans. I do have a bunch of blue jeans. I'm going to make a blue jean quilt. I got a whole sack of them my daughter brought to me, and I'm going to be, I haven't started cutting them. Oh, yeah, I did. I got that button, that pocket. But um, I'm going to, I'm going to be starting that one, too. Now, when I do the blue jean one, though, those ones, I'm not going to be concerned about the size of the patches. There's going to be different sizes of patches on that one. And, um... There's going to be different sizes of patches on my blue jean one, but they'll all fit together in the end. So, and I'm not sure exactly how that's going to work, but I will figure that one out too. And that's the thing about this kind of a quilt, this junk quilt, this junky old quilt is, what the heck I got on my finger hurts. Looks like a hang now. Okay. But look at there how pretty. And these squares. If you have a square ruler. And this one is by. I don't know. Macaflu. But there's a bunch of companies. But I ordered the cheapest one. They have more expensive ones too. But when I ordered this one. It come with a set of four different squares. But um. And then it's nice, because like I got my pegboard up there. It's got a hole in it. It'll hang right up there on my pegboard. But like this one here, on this particular part of the square right here, it's kind of very plain. So I'll probably add something to that. Before you start sewing, always make sure that you have the you have it right so you can see the flannel or whatever you're using on the backing. Doesn't have to be flannel. I'm just using flannel. And um so, let me see if this will work okay. I, I, no, you got to turn on, Elizabeth. And so, yeah, it's... Now, in this kind of a quilt also, if one time you wash it and then it, you got a hole in it, just put a patch on it. And it'll match. It, the patch will blend right in. The patch will blend right in. You don't have to even be concerned if um, if you don't have the same kind of fabric to make the patch if you wear a hole in it. And so that's a great thing to that's a great thing to know.
Now, I don't know if y'all are going to get bored with these videos if I keep showing the same thing over and over. But um, I may end up showing the same thing over and over because I like to jabber, jabber when I play. And I could be talking to myself, you know. But I might as well have the video on. But these are fun. See there? Now I got another one ready to go with the back on it. So that might be what I'll do today is work because I got quite a few backs cut out. And um, I love Grandma says that right there. And anyway, so anyway, that I'm going to call that, I'm going to call that enough right now. And we're going to go a Helen Steiner Rice. We're going to read. We're going to, we're going to let, I don't know, Helen Steiner Rice. Um, we're going to let her tell us something. Um, this, this one is the Helen Steiner Rice Poems for All Seasons. And so, because we're in the winter season, I'm in the back of the book where there's a lot of winter and Christmas things. It says, if there had never been a Christmas... If God had never sent his son to dwell with man on earth, if there had been no Christmas to herald the Christ child's birth, if in this world of violence and hatred, crime and war, there were absolutely nothing that made life worth living for, if whenever man was troubled and lost in loneliness, there were no haven for his heart to calm his restlessness, then life would be intolerable and loathsome with disgust, for there would be no love at all, just ugliness and lust. And there would be no Easter and no resurrected Lord, no promise of eternity and no heavenly reward. So let us thank our Father that he sent his only Son. So after this life's ended and our work on earth is done, there's the promise of eternity where our cross becomes a crown when all our trials are over and we lay our burden down and that is by helen steiner rice and that's beautiful that's just beautiful and i don't read these ahead of time i, I when i'm reading them on to you i'm reading it it's an, an originally i mean i don't i should read it ahead of time because then i'd be able to enunciate the words probably a little bit better but it's just the way i do the way I do. Oh gosh, I need to clean up that area back there. Clean off my... If I'm going to be using this tripod thing, I need to clean my area so y'all don't see this big fat mess. Because I'm afraid somebody's going to call the Hoarders International or something. Put this down like this. I like these little headband things. They might not look all that good, but they sure do keep my hair out of my face. Okay, all right, I'm going to let you go now. What's it been, 43 minutes and 40 seconds. Okay, God bless you all. And stitch some patchwork quilt together any way you want. Just keep stitching and keep stitching and keep stitching. And you know what? You're going to love whatever it turns out to be. And if you do this type of patchwork, there is so absolutely no wrong if you're doing a real intricate applique patchwork or something and then you one seam is wrong the whole thing just goes kaputski and you for me anyway i just get so discouraged and so doing something like this you don't get discouraged because it's the more the the more you put in it the better you're going to like it. It's just going to just be perfect. Every piece perfect. And so go ahead and start you a jazzy quilt. We'll call it maybe a jazzy quilt because it's a little different. I was watching one lady one day. She was describing the differences. She was very professional, but she was discuss discussing the differences between a patchwork and a crumb quilt 
and a crazy quilt and there was another one I think too but she was saying how it had all different it had to do with the sizes of the scraps and I thought no that's even even that's just too many rules for me so I just if it's a scrap of fabric I'm gonna sew it I'm going to just sew it. Okay. Um, love you all. God bless you all. May he watch over you every step you take, every move you make, and I will see your smiling faces on the next video. God bless. God bless. And where did I put my mouse? Let's see. i got to follow the cord. Wait a minute. Did I stick it in here? Oh, there it is. There it is. Wait a minute. Oh, oop. I put that square up there. And then here's my... I found it. It was in a mouse trap. Will it work on this thing here? There it is. God bless.